The wooden patterns have arrived for creating the formers for the fuselage. Dave's already started to work on the fuselage formers, making a test piece. Because we're changing all these frames, yeah. we took that frame out there and we've got the form. Have you seen the form around the corner? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just passed yeah. it. So, what, what we've done is um, you use that as a test piece to knock around the radius just to make sure we can form it without it cracking, basically. So, oh, so that's just a test. Yeah, it went well, so that's a test piece. So, the mater material's coming in later this week and then I can start making the form. This is the first one we're going to do, though, so yeah. obviously that's. There as well, so that's the full. That's the Which full. number is this? That's 35, 30, 37. Oh, 30, 35, yeah. Okay. So that one. 37, nice. 37. Yeah, well, what will happen is I'll, I'll knock all these over, trim them down, get them all nice and flat, and then. Well, or somebody else will start punching these holes in and putting the holes in. Yeah. I'm off on there to have a bit of production line going. Yeah. You know, um, when you do that, oops, yeah, yeah. all the way around, yeah. how do you turn this lip over here? Knock that over? Yeah. You have, you have to knock it so far and then take it onto the shrinking and stretching machine. Yeah. Round there you've got to stretch it, round there you shrink it and then knock it a bit further, do shrink it and stretch it again, knock it a bit further until it goes over to 90 degrees. Quite a long process. Yeah, so I was going to say, you can't use the pattern, the wooden pattern inside and tap it over, yeah. can you? Not because straight you away, no. No, well, if you try to tap it over straight away without stretching the material, it'd, cr it'd crack because there's not enough material. Yeah. So it'd crack away, so. yeah. Oh, that's good, though. Yeah. Does it take a long to... To do one, do I'm, I'm, I'm thinking one of these might take about a week. It's a long process, like I say, there's a lot, a lot of work involved. Yeah. And you've got all these holes and things and... Yeah, a lot of off. drilling, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. So bearing in mind, I've got to make 12 of these. So we're yeah. about three months' work. Yeah. But then, once they're all in, we're away then, we skin them. Yeah. What, what are these for? Um... They're through some of the control... working on removing the underwing plug rivets from the forward spar. If you remember, the plug rivets were unique to Avros in the 1940s. These were used when riveting into a solid part of the boom of the spar. Phil's working on the lower door frame of the starboard side of the fuselage. Remains of the original lower door frame where the uh, crew's crew access door, yeah. lower flange. And uh, I'm slowly rebuilding the, uh, the same area on the aircraft, uh, on the tail section there. Well, I'm just actually putting this together as a template to get my. Um, 
datums for my the spacing on the rivets, known as the pitch. And uh, sorry, this is a double row here, so I'm just working out actually what the pitch is. Here is one inch. So I can put it onto the new frame. Yeah. Yeah. So still making steady progress. Good. You can see what we're starting off with. Yeah. And yeah. We're turning it effectively into a brand new structure. I mean, the other part looked neat. Job from the inside where you yeah. put the um, triangle. Doublers, Support, yeah, yeah. Place. yeah, I'm just making those as well. Yeah. In fact, I'm making a new, uh, a new little packing strip here. Uh, there's the old one. The film company drilled all these rivets out here, took them up to five mil. Uh, but in actual fact, they should be one eighth of an inch, which is 3.2 millimeters. So um, effectively, they've damaged that. Yeah. The pair, so the packing strip. Uh, that will fit just there, but on the on the tail section. Yeah. yeah. And this is the um, the bottom of the. This is the, the bottom. Exactly. You've got the top done now. Exactly. Yeah. The crew. Um, Step there's, in there's it. the bottom of the corner of the door, and the other one there, and the crew will access the aircraft. Yeah. 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 Is that where the steel plate goes on? Exactly. Top? In fact, there, just there are the two holes where that little access ladder see, hooks yeah. on uh, to get uh, in and out of the aircraft. Yeah. Uh, sort of the data. These are all uh, John's working on these here. Uh, they're all part of the wing. Yeah. That's the wing boys. Uh, oh, we're, we're uh, in yeah. the fuse yeah. Yeah. Good. Right, thanks. All right, thank yeah. you. John's moved over to the French wing's trailing edge. You move over to this one, have you now, John? Well, I just can't, I can't get into the wing at the minute. Oh. So many people working around it. Yeah. So people working around it. But, uh, we have a bit of a power trip yesterday, so I thought I'd install. Let's get this in, John. Well, the, the anchor knots on the back, the further they go up that way, the worse it gets, but most of them are just turning out. Uh, there's odd one where the anchor nut just broken off the, uh, the rivet. Yeah. So you won't be able to get to the anchor nuts then, until mm -hmm. you get some skins off. Yeah, no, the, the are, they are in there, you can get two of them, yeah. but it, it, it's pretty awkward. I've got a couple of questions, John. Well, I, uh, the Hamden, that's not progressing at all now, is it, while you're working here? Well, not during the week, no. Are you working on this at weekends, are you? Trying to. Yeah. Yeah. So you made progress then? I, d I thought it had come to a standstill, like. No, no, no. 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 It never comes to a standstill. Yeah. Might be very slow, but yeah. it never comes to a oh, standstill. Oh, so it's still progressing? Yeah. Is there right. anything ever nipped over there and had a look at it? Would I see any progress from last time? No, you won't. No. It's all... This tiny little brackets and things like that, nothing major. Yeah. Like that. yeah. And another one was, when you had the drawings out for the formers, you got a, a 17 foot diameter or radius of a curve. Yeah. Did they um, scan all the drawings, show where it was, where the centre was? No? No. Oh. no on, on the cat thing where you saw them doing it, you just yeah. can't tell them, you just told you exactly where it was. Yeah. So then we got the wooden formers and that's it. Yeah. yeah. So there was no, it didn't, at the, it's CAD drawing didn't show you where the, the centre of the no. arc was. No. Because mm. uh, so we've got the top. Mm. We've got the. Uh, we've got these, you see. That's what you form the metal over. Yeah. That, that, that is the, the part that you actually bend the metal over. It's got a radius there. Yeah. 
and that bit there, that clamps on top of it, a piece of metal in between, so it doesn't lift. You clamp that up and then you bash it, bash it all round, yeah. straighten it all up, take it out. Yeah. And you, uh, but the cad drawing didn't actually show up any dimension for the curves, no. No information on that, that, that tells us everything that does. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right, thanks, John. Yeah. That's what you get. That's the tightest curve yeah. that we've got on any of them. Yeah, I was talking to Dave about it, and I said you didn't have to use soap, heat it up to bend it. I mean, you, on once you'd use some soap, yeah. didn't you, to get the temperature yeah. right? Yeah, the only problem we've got with this is the, is the shrinkers we've got at the minute mark the material. Yeah. Yeah, but that, that's no good for airworthy, but we have got some proper ones coming. We yeah. actually do that, because that's that curve there, basically. Yeah. And what happens when you bend it over? On the outside, you've got an excess of material. Yeah. You've got too much material because yeah. you're actually making it smaller. So you've got to shrink that bit, take up, take up all your undulations. On the inside, you're stretching it, yeah. which is the, mo the most difficult because it can crack it. Yeah. But uh, as, as you see, you managed to uh, yeah. do it quite nicely. And when we get the proper shrinker stretchers, There'll be no marks on that at all. Yes, it's spot on. Oh, good. All right, thanks. So that, that is, well, basically, uh, to there. Yeah. That, that is one half You're doing it, of a form. No, this this is 33, which is the bit of wood I just showed you, 33. Yeah. So this is the smallest one we're doing for this. Yeah. So that, that's the most dif more difficult one. Yeah. Yeah, of course it is. I think yeah. they are, the, 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 the easier, the, the less curve you've got, the yeah. easier it is. Oh, right, thanks, so, John. So there's an awful lot of work in that. Yeah, oh, there is. Oh, yeah. gosh, yeah. With all the... Look, what, these holes, then, now, will you put them back in, or will they... Um, not, not necessarily these ones, we will. Yeah. Those cutouts, what the string is, we've got to do. We've got to make new brackets. Well, there because they need to be a bit longer because our stringers are a bit dif different yeah. and, and the holes in there will be too close to the to the radius there yeah. and the edge so they need to pull out a little bit more mm -hmm. so you've got to make a few hundred of them <laughs> all right thank you John. Well, Bill is from Australia a volunteer and he's making all the background noise today It's Friday, the 14th of January, 2022. Been to East Kirby today to see if there's any progress on the formers for the fuselage, but unfortunately the material has not turned up. Anyway, talking about these fuselage formers, when I, was talk when I was there on Tuesday, I spoke to John about them and about the CAD drawings and a measurement for a 17 foot radius, which he said, there was no drawing, no measurements on the drawings. This I didn't quite understand. So when I went back today, I had a word with him and he explained. Um, about the CAD drawings and no measurements. How does the pattern maker make the patterns if there's no measurement? It's a program. It is a program yeah. from the computer into his machine then, is it? Yeah, he's got a computer program, so we've, we've got the... Which is that, basically. Yeah. But that doesn't give you any radius or anything like that, it just... And so it... So it, the, 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 all, all, all the dimensions of that will be in, in a computer program, which you just slot into your um, routing machine and boom, it just does it. Yeah, I was going to say, because I, I was thinking of him doing it by hand, doing all these curves with a Gosh, compass, no, no, and then uh, working no, from there. No, it's all done by machine. Well, the computer into the machine, and the machine just cuts it out. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Right, thanks, John. 